what a turnaround it was for the Vancouver Canucks across the course of this regular season. Starting out sub-500, hovering around 500, and then the last month and a half, two months or so, 30, we just jumped up to 35, 23, and 3. Back in the playoff race, although, I mean, it is a precarious position. We're only three points ahead of a, a team that's out of the playoffs. In the flames, 69 points for the crack, and like, can easily fall out. And, yeah, you know, that is what it is. We, If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, sorry, I hit the desk there a bit earlier. There might be a big old noise in your... Uh... Oh, yeah, Patterson's injured right now, too. So that should be interesting. You are going to be missing Patterson. Clefbaum's moving up to the top. But, I mean, we could make some trades here at the deadline... But for the most part, like, yeah, most of our trades, especially if we are moving for players' prospects, or we can do that at the draft. Um, that's likely the, the best scenario here because the guys who are in rough positions likely at this point aren't going to want to give up their picks, right? Like, who's who's out of the playoffs right now which may want to give up their picks? Like, Preds, Wild Blues, probably not. Coyotes, for sure not. Vegas, like, maybe, but it's very rare that they want to give up their picks here, I've noticed, and then... You just try to find the outliers at the draft. Yeah, it's so it's so rare that they actually want to give up picks like outside of either the trade deadline minigame, which is broken, or uh, you know at the draft. I, I highly doubt they fix the trade deadline minigame. By the way, and I just I don't like it. <laughs> it it's, it causes you to best lines is your shit because I don't think there's any way they can fix that either. It's just how it's like programmed. Good luck find, digging in their code and finding it. Their code is a hot mess. Anyway. Um, I already checked the Patterson thing, I think. He's just still wanting a buttload of cash. <laughs> he needs to calm the hell down. Uh, it's going to be tough to get Patterson back. Luckily, he's RFA, but still. May have to get him to like a short-term deal and, you know, try to uh, extend him again and just keep going for that. But I'd love to lock him in and then not have to worry about it. We'll see if we're actually able to do that. Uh Anyway, let's uh, let's look at the trades here. We have tons of junk. We could grab a, a few other picks, and that's kind of what we're after now. And then at the at the uh, at the draft itself, we could be moving stuff up. We can have more than twelve picks, but we just can't draft all of them, so we have to trade them. But I'll just get twelve probably for right now. Um, I'm liking having Winnipeg second. Looks like that'll be a pretty good second. We also have their oh, their fourth. No extra third. Actually, getting a third would be great. Yeah, getting a third here would be fantastic. Let's see if we can do that. We have tons of junk. I don't know if all of it... I don't know if we could push all of it in there for... Yeah. Might be tougher. So, like... Yeah, you got Vorbiev, low four, 57, 19. I'd happily... Th you know what? We could probably get to a third here. If we throw him in there. It might cost all of them. But that's kind of okay. A lot of defensemen... <laughs> If I could throw all of this in for a third, that'd be great. You know what? I'll take off. Okay, hold on. We'll take off those two. Because a team who wants Vorbiev is going to want those two. And then they're say, you know, same player for a, uh, for a similar role, etc. So forth. Um, I don't think this will net us a third. Well, I don't have a third. Hey, here's going to be a thing where we cannot find a third when... <laughs> I swear to God, doesn't this happen every time? We're looking for a specific round pick and every team we fucking click on does not have... <sighs> Hello, LA. You have a third? No, you have 10 hundred seconds. Oilers, I don't like the record. I'm trying to find, like, a team that would the third would be cut. Hey, here we go. Oh, <laughs> here's where all the thirds are. Detroit has them. This is, that's going to be too much value. Even though it looks like it's fine. Oh, never mind. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> it got Detroit's own thirds. So there we go. We have another third now. And now we have those other two picks. We can grab, like, a fifth or a sixth. That'd be great. So we're going to have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we can grab one more here. Well, one more that we can actually draft with. We'll probably be moving around at the draft. We can still get two more in the first two rounds. This is the last year we could do that. After this, this would be the max amount that we could have in the first two rounds. Three. Okay. So a fifth or a six, and those two guys that we have, the two junk guys that we have, are all both 70s, so I'm assuming it'll only be a six, but we'll try for a fifth. 
Uh, yeah, pro now we have to search for someone who doesn't want them because they're gonna be they're gonna say, hey, it's the sa same player, you know, similar role, blah blah. blah. So <laughs> Man, they had a six, but not a fifth. I swear to God, dude, like clockwork. All right, Arizona, give me a five. There we go. Hey, dude, it actually worked. You know what? That was a great tread down line. <laughs> that really was. We got a third for a junk. We just got a fifth for junk. Essentially, we got two picks kind of for free. And that third especially may, in fact, be able to turn into a medium elite here. I mean, we still have to do a lot more scouting. But you never know. You never know, man. That third, fourth round is prime territory for those medium elite steals. They got five-year TA, sure, so they're still crapshoots, but that's value, right? You automatically, like, minimum triple that value. So, I like it. Um, that'll probably do it here for the trade deadline. Um, again, not if we're, as long as we, if we're in a playoff spot, I'm not going to sell just because, you know, that, that's, that, that's as far as I'll, I'll, I try to balance it. I know, you know, some people love the realism. Um, I don't, <laughs> or I, I, I don't really care as much. So I, I, I try to balance it. I'll throw, you know, I do certain things that are realistic, certain things that aren't. But I will never ever not trade a player because it may be deemed unrealistic, especially for multiple years into a franchise mode. Um, because I always bring this example up. People told me I was crazy that I traded Pacioretty in NHL 17 from the Habs. <laughs> and I think the, the exact same year I traded him was the exact same year he got traded in real life. So it's like, you cannot predict what is what will be realistic in a, in a couple years from now. You simply can't. And you honestly can't predict what will be realistic, like, even a year from now. Like, damn, like, it's so much, so much can change. Just think about the Shea Weber, P.K. Subban thing, right? You know? I was convinced that long-term winner was going to be the team that received Subban. <laughs> Did not work out that way. Um, yeah, so... That's, uh, that's going to be a trade deadline, I think. Pedersen's still out. Yeah, I don't... I mean, we got we got max picks now. There's nothing... Not, nothing... Nothing really else to do. I'm going to keep... I'm going to go slowly here. I'm going to keep hoping Pedersen changes his mind here. I'm going to go up like... I don't know if it'll go... I don't know if week by week will work, but I do want to take it relatively slow here. I'll just pass the dead... Excuse me, the deadline. Oh my god! Holtz to Tampa Bay with a 7. Uh, New Jersey getting Leeson in two thirds. That's a wild trade. Okay. Uh, Robin Salo accepted his extension. I like it. We lost to Vegas. Beat LA. And then beat them. Pedersen out with injury. I wonder if that'll like affect his contract ask or anything. I highly doubt it. No, it sounds the same fucking thing. I might have to go multiple weeks and stuff, but. Just trying, just trying some things here. Yeah, let's go up just two weeks here. I don't know. He's fully healed now. That's good. Let's get him back in there. Okay, how did I do? I think I just did this. Probably. Looks like it. Yeah, I think that's what we were rolling with. Let me make sure he's on the... Let's do that also. He should... Horvath should be taking those draws. Better since scoring more, so we'll keep him on the one time, I guess. There we go. Alright. Continuing to... Uh, got our asses handed to us by Minnesota, and it's uh, time for some scouting real quick. Alright, continuing on here. Got one more week to go. Michael Furland is injured. Let me throw on this plastic guy. Haven't had too many injuries, because I only have like one or two depth guys. That's how it works. Game won't injure you as much. Uh, apparently my NHL, though, that the rule doesn't fucking apply. Strom now injured, but we're still winning games here. Throw Bluger in there. We're all right. <laughs> Except for the times we lose and allow nine goals. What the hell? <laughs> still going to make the playoffs, though. 42, 26, and 3. Yeah, we're pretty much firmly in. Patterson keeps crushing it. It's going to be tough. Come on, man. Stop wanting 15 fucking million. Dude! Holy shit. This sucks. <laughs> All right, probably just get to the end of the season now and check again because we're right there. Yeah, let's go all the way up. <laughs> Pretty rough, man. Oscar, dude, man, these injuries are crushing us. Do we have... Okay, Strom is back. 
Let's do this. I know he's still technically injured, but let's hope he doesn't re-injure himself. It's a bit of a risk, but I don't care. I'm willing to take it. So many injuries, though, man. So many injuries to our NHL team. It's been quite a few. But we're still, like, again, we're still making the playoffs and shit, so it's all, it's all working out. All right, come on. Uh, nope. Lincoln, and I don't think he was actually out. He might be, though. I don't know. We've had... He was out. Look at that. There you go, Lincoln. <laughs> oh, I, I already put him back in. Exit. There we go. All righty. Uh, not going to hit 50 wins most likely. God damn it! He got fully healed, but now he has a fucking MCL sprain. Holy shit. Okay, um. We are screwed. I'm gonna double switch Gagne and Bluger. That's honestly. Oh, what the hell? Oh, Clef Bomb. Hold on. Okay, Clef Bomb's back. Clef Bomb in. Still slightly injured, sure, but I gotta do this. Bluger will switch with Gagne, and then Gagne will fill in for Strom everywhere. Not pretty, and he is declining, but he's got the offensive stats because of the stat growth. So, I gotta do it like this. <laughs> I know Paton's a playmaker, but he just doesn't have the stats, right? Like, gives plus one count. It's not, not worth it. Might as well get the higher stats there. We'll just do that as a sub in all lines thing. Maybe I'll move... <laughs> Fuck you, game. Holy shit. Oh, boy. Okay. Is anyone even good on the top? Not really. Alright, well, let's see for a sec. Rathbone's also left defense. He's minus three. How much does he hate it? Might actually be minus three. Give me a sec. I'm gonna exit. Oh, whatever. We'll finish off the year and, and we'll double check that, but holy shit. What a fucking year, man. Let's... Get to the actual playoffs here. End of the season. Come on now. What the hell? There we go. Taking on Calgary in the first round. No Tyler Myers. Fuck me, man. This is horrible. Ugh, minus one. I don't like that. It's not really worth the plus one. They have, like, the same offensive stats. Even though I was hoping because Patan's a playmaker, it'd fit better. But, like, it technically does, but then your fourth line sucks. Yeah, this is rough, dude. <laughs> we are so fucked. It's only a minus one. We can maintain plus two by doing that. But it's still a minus one. Yeah, it's... This is the week like, of technically the best bet to get no minuses, but holy crap. I guess Kai Gorodov's getting some time with Quinn Hughes. Ugh. <laughs> this fucking sucks. Demko, you're going to have to carry, my friend. You're going to have to carry. Strom and Myers are both out for a long, long time. Like, literally both till June, right? Like, we're, yeah, they're, they're, they're done. This is our lineup. <laughs> That fucking sucks. All right, so we're definitely not going to get too far. Like, why couldn't those injuries have happened earlier and then we could have just tanked? Yeah. <laughs> but no, we had to make the playoffs with this, didn't we? Oh, fuck me. Okay, first things first. Check on uh, Patterson. Come on, dude, please. Oh, my God. He's, it's just not changing. It's just not changing. Huh. <sighs> I'm just going to still hope and wait, honestly, and just see if we can get... Like I said, we got the RFA, so... Ugh. All right, let's look at some stats here. What a way to end the year, huh? What a way to end it. 3-3-5, three, 2-7-7, three, seven, seven, not great. Power play went up. Penalty kill kind of went down. Uh, we'll see how we stacked up. It's not going to be tremendous. Offensively, just in the top five. Defensively... 
Mm, maybe just in the top 10, but probably outside. Uh, yeah, tied for being in the top 10, but yeah, I'm not going to say no. Uh, power play, middle of the pack, penalty kill in the top 10, but yeah, it's not great, and we're missing key pieces. We're missing, you know, Tyler Myers, who's on the top pairing. Uh, we're missing Strom, who's our second line center. Fuck. This sucks, man. Patterson was 77 points in 73 games played. He kicked ass. I mean, yeah, he's honestly earn, earns a lot of money, or he could earn a lot of money. I'm just trying to lock him into a good deal. Horvat, 70 points. Tarasenko, 67, man. Honestly, he might get some stack growth out of this, which would make him a great guy to trade. Strom won't 57 and 76, though, not bad. Hoaglander, same thing, pretty good. Garland had 50 points, and he's going to be playing, you know, second line now. Oh, sorry, never mind. No, Gagne, my bad. Uh, yeah, Garland, not bad, but also not good. 45 points for Gagne on the third line is pretty good. But he played some second line at the end. Clefbaum, not a bad rookie year. Could have been better. Put Coles in. It's all okay. Bluger actually did pretty damn good as a depth guy. 14 points, 27 games played. Thatcher Demko, 9-1-7, 2.5. DPH actually did pretty shit. All things considered, yeah. Yeah, he actually did really bad. Lincoln was much, much better. At this point, I'm, I'll probably trade DPH. He's an 84, dude. I don't need that. <laughs> trade his ass, man. Capitalize on that value. Should be RFA, even if he's got, he has another year he'll have to have. So I'm honestly looking to trade DPH here, too. Let him go to a team who could use him as a starter because he's terrible as a backup. Absolutely awful. All right, well, let's see what happened around the league. Ovechkin, 114 points, saying fuck you to all your predictions. 62 goals. <laughs> he's taking home all the hardware this year. We're back to the uh, 2010s, man. <laughs> Ovechkin and Crosby taking home all the hardware. Yeah, he beat Matthews. By seven goals. Assists. Aho at 77. Not bad. Who's the most clutch? Uh, I, Yeah, I guess Pedersen. Eight game winners in 27. Maybe Phillips because seven and like 15. But also Lowell. Uh, power play goal leader was Ovechkin with 21. You figured that would be the case. Also led in power play points with 34. Shorties. Four for Sasha Barkov. Shorthand of points. Six for Marshawn, Gord, Dvorak up there too. Ver, Verhage. I, I hate his name. I just never am able to pronounce it right. It's just one of those names. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly. So he's definitely going to be one of the front runners, of course. We're still in that stage of this. But Bergeron is better. Should win it. Um, Aho Honorable Mention. Yeah, it's pretty much between... Oh, there's Crosby, but they never seem to give it to him. Barkov up there, too. He, yeah, so... Kind of a three-horse, three-and-a-half-horse race. They seem to never give it to Crosby. All right. Let's check out the Norris favorites. Oh, hello. Uh, Quinn Hughes may win that Norris again, although... Gerard is 64 points and plus 35. I think the game might give it to him. He also has 20 goals. I'm a, I would give it to him, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say... Samuel Girard should win the Norris here, but another great uh, season for Quinn Hughes, who ties with Hedman in points. So I don't know if anyone guessed Hedman for the league, but there you are. The goalie. All right, let's see. Uh, Linus Olmark, uh, Mike Smith. <laughs> I would say it's a tie between them because that's funny. And it's close enough, honestly, to be a tie. So Olmark and Smith, I'd say, are the two guys... Demko actually was kind of up there. Yeah, he made it back. Yeah. So, <laughs> still a top five goaltender, man. Looking good. All right, Rooks. Uh, Liam Jacobs, 82 point. Yeah, I mean, he was the fucking 88 franchise. He's now 93. He's a minus 10. <sighs> Arizona, 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 Arizona. Everyone go, everyone, I swear, they, people always rot in Arizona. Marek Zavatos had a tremendous rookie season. Nice, 69 points, 41 goals, 82 points. He just, you, you, you got to be a rookie at the same time as uh, Liam Jacobs here. Liam Jacobs. 
So good luck. Doucet also, and that's another rookie. Bedard actually had 60 points, which is not bad whatsoever. He's probably playing like top line and shit. Trey, look at all the yeah, look at all the members up here, man. Myers, Johnson, Doucet, Svatos. Not, not bad, man. All right, so we know no goaltender is gonna like take away the Thunder. Although, so yeah, it's not bad. Not bad for UPL. 73 games played, though. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, Daw is looking pretty good. Ooh, yeah, he could be... Uh, yeah. Should be pretty solid. Anyway, let's do the fun stats now. Hits. There we go. Hor Horvat, baby. Yes, 205 hits for Horvat. Let's go. Fights. Seven for Kai Gordov. I did, yeah, I did change him, so he's going to have less and less uh, as this goes on. But he led the league in fights, which is hilarious because most of those came at the beginning of the year. <laughs> and then we told, him, we told him, hey, man, we need you on the ice. Don't fight as much. And he's like, okay. All right. So that's that. Here's the playoff tree. The Wild in Winnipeg. Avs in Stars. Us against Calgary. And then uh, the Oilers in the Ducks. Uh, the Canes and the Isles, Caps and the Panthers, Caps and the Cats, uh, the Bruins and the Lightning, never ever going to call them the Bolts, uh, the Leafs and the Jackets, who might be blue. There we are. Um, let's see what we're going up against here in Calgary. We're, I think we're fucked. Like, I don't think we get past, we shouldn't get past this first round, which likely means we will. Um... Demko's going to carry. Goudreau, Lindholm, Kachuk, Perron, uh, Backlund, Dubé, Mangiapane, Coleman, Vetrano. I mean, they're not super, super strong, but they are good enough. Hannafin, Anderson, Shillington, Tanev, Dumoulin, Carlson. Then they're going to have Markstrom and Darth Vader. So, yeah, they could both do pretty good. They're missing. Oh, okay, here's, yeah, so they're missing Toffoli. Don't know when he's coming back, but they're missing Toffoli. So there's a, uh, yeah, there's your, boom. There's a much, much better second line. Yeah, Dubé slides over there to Foley in there. Yeah. Still not amazing, but it's much, much better with that. And we'll see, he might be coming back at some points. So he compared it to us. I mean, we have Gagne in the second line center role right now. Like, our, our wingers are pretty good, but without Strom, our, our center depth is awful. And defensively, we're very plucked. Goaltender-wise, hopeful like hell that Thatcher Demko carries. But again, if we lose, we lose. See what happens. We're just we're retooling on the fly here. While still selling tickets. Alright. Game one. Home ice advantage here. Uh Michael Furlan back. Throw him in there. Uh we lose three to two, so we're not able to get the goal scoring going. Game two. Uh fucking hell, dude. Another injury. We got to call someone up. Oh, man. At this point, I'm just calling up that shit guy. Yeah, I'm literally... I don't care. This is ridiculous. How many fucking injuries are we going to have? Just throwing him in. Don't care. He's 70 overall. I don't care. Probably isn't a shit face. Oh, hey, I guess it's plus two. We won that game. Four to one. <laughs> so, Sirius is even one game apiece. On the road now into maybe the Saddle Dome. I don't know. Fuck you! Seriously, what is this? What the fuck is this? What is happening? I've never had this many injuries. There you go, Luke. Yikes. Hey, you know what? No way, that's no way that's a minus two. I'm calling bullshit. Give me a sec. We <laughs> That's your Demko. Uh there's no way that's a minus fucking three. Told you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pair Shen with Hughes. <laughs> Good luck. Hughes better lug your ass around. Do not ever cross the red line there, Luke. <laughs> He's not allowed to cross the red line, dude. Oh, man. Okay, well, he won that game, which is hilarious. Game four. For fuck's sake, dude. Three to one series lead with an absolutely atrocious lineup. Game five. And we advance to the second round. Calgary, that's embarrassing. But you're no strangers to embarrassment in the playoffs. So there you go, Teddy Bluger. I'm keeping this plastic guy up there because you never know what's going to happen. All right, Anaheim. 
in the second round here. What the fuck? <laughs> How the hell do we win this, dude? This game's stupid. Oh boy. All right. Um, we're in the West. Three point four, one point six. Yeah, that that's a lineup that does that. Uh, decent power play, not great. Terrible penalty kill. Yeah, only one for four. That's not great. Or you know whatever. If they're scoring on us one for four, but our stats were hilariously good. Uh, let's check out the individual stats. I'm actually kind of curious what's happening here. Hoaglander leading the way, six points, but Colson four, Bailey Paton. First line's doing kind of fuck all here. Yeah, first line's really kind of meh. Hughes is doing his part. He's a plus five somehow. Shen's a plus one in two games. Don't ask me how. And Thatcher Dem goes carrying, so. <laughs> Guess you kind of expected it. DiPietro hopped in and made stopped 14 of 14 shots in a cleanup roll. Who knows what game that was in. We never really got blown out, so what the hell do you face... Unless they scored, like, three in quick succession here. Wait, wait, where was he in? Unless they scored three, we yanked him, and then he... No, he would have gotten credit with a win. Why the fuck was he, did he play? Who knows? All right, anyway. Anaheim. <laughs> Anaheim in the second round. Comtois, Zig Zigris, and Terry. Lindstrom, Jaron Myers, Shane Wright. Fuck me. Milano, McTavish, Silverberg. Yeah, this, they should kick our ass. This is a much well balanced team. Not as great defensively. Fowler, Drizdil, Gooley, Weidman, Mahura, Carrick. But they got Gibby, who's done fantastic. And they have Dostal as a backup. They still got Henry. Oh, yeah, Henrik exists. So, yeah. Should be a tougher matchup, but we got home ice advantage once again. You never know. Jaron Myers is going down. Rathbone's fully healed. Do I dare even change what's happening right now? I guess. <laughs> Rathbone back in. We'll, we'll leave him up here, like I said. Game one, four to nothing shutout. Game two, three to two loss. All right, on the road now. They got to split on our ice into Honda Center. Another shutout, six to nothing this time. Game four on the road. Oh, we got shut out this time. I was like, no way. Yeah, we got shut out. Okay, so even series, two games apiece. A pivotal game five here. It's a best of three series. We have the home ice advantage. Five to two victory at game six. And we advance to the conference finals. <laughs> without Strom, without Tyler Myers. I'll skip. I don't want to, but I'll do it because I always do at this point. Fuck it. If we get this far, we don't deserve to scout. There you go. I don't know. Oh, boy. <laughs> Colorado in the conference finals. The hell is going on? Hoglander is still leading the way, but if we have, if, if we by some miracle pull off the stupidest upset in NHL history and win the cup, I mean it's fucking Demko who's con Smythe. Three, four, five, one, seven, three. Power plays awful. Penalty kill got better. <laughs> I'm not changing anything. I'm just not because this is too funny. All right, individual stats here. Hoaglander, Pedersen had a great series. Jumped up to 10 points. Garland has 9. Tarasenko, 8. Gagne, Horvat. Bailey actually not doing bad. Looks like our depth is really, really coming to play. Like, that fourth line's killing it. They really are. Good for them. Getting a lot of depth scoring help. I think that's helping. Obviously, it's helping us if it's called help. But I think that's really boosting us here. Liking it. Hughes and Kai Gordov are going off, man. They really are. And... Thatcher Demko is unreal. He's absolutely unreal. 9-3-5 and a 1-8. That's disgusting. Literally disgusting. And who, But here we go up against Colorado, man. If any team's going to break through the mole, it's going to be them. Right? You think. Landeskog, McKinnon, Rotten, scary. Costin, Kadri, O'Connor, decent. Dalcal, Newhook, Nechushkin, pretty solid for a third line. Great down the middle. Tonev, Kampf, Nyquist. Byron, McCarr, Taves, Gerard, good God. Yeah, they, they should fucking destroy us. They should. On paper, if... Whoa, front south. Interesting. He's an 85, and he's kicking ass, man. He's got a 9-2-2. Yeah, he's... Perlini, no real injuries. They got some forward depth. They should fucking stomp our yard. But we'll see what happens. They got the whole mice advantage. 
So plan on the road here in Balls Arena. Lost five to one in game one, game two. Win four to one. Wow. Kind of surprised. But we split on the road into the Rogers Place Arena Center. Who knows? Lost game three. Game four on home ice. One, four to one. Even series. Pivotal game five here. Best of three, but we're on the road. Lost three to one. Back on home ice. Can we force a game seven? No, we can't. And Colorado gets the better of us, as they fucking well should. But Thatcher Demko did his part. Good on Francois and everyone else. And they have a 1 0 lead against Tampa in the finals. <laughs> Another conference finals appearance for us, and it was literally on the back of Thatcher Demko. This is why we need to get the team in front of him quickly because, dude, look at how well he's simming. Like, this is why I'm, I'm emphasizing ETA and guys that fit and just really trying to turn, like, get this going quickly because, holy crap, Thatcher Demko is god tier. It's absolutely unreal how good he is. I don't care about team stats at this point. Let's just see. Like, no, no one even close to point per game at the end of the day. I think Houston Pedersen had the same amount of points. It was all that. And his stats would have dropped, but he still had a 9-2-5. Like, he, uh, he's still so good. We have got to get this team around him, man. He's 28 now, you know? We've got next year. Start Honestly, start. It's, you know, starting next year, it, we're taking this, taking running for cups seriously. Like, straight up. We're, we're getting guys, yes, who can fill in the roles, but also... I'm not making a trade for a young guy unless it's really, really going to benefit us and quickly. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. It's got to benefit us quickly. We got to cap capitalize on that Demko window. I like it. It's like having a timer. Demko's so fucking good, but we just need to get, you know, that team around him. All right, well, draft will be up in the next one. Yet another conference finals appearance. We've yet to make the cup finals, but, <laughs> I mean, we're kicking some ass, man. <laughs> And uh, Thatcher Demko is a god. We just, again, need that supporting cast. Need that defensive. We're going to have so much help coming in next season. Jagger Marlowe. Dylan Benoit. Mm, we're already going to look better. We're going to still have Strom if we want to hold on to him. Tarasenko, if he gets some of that stack growth, we could move him because... You th uh, I don't actually don't know. Well, maybe get another sniper. Speaking of which, hold on. Did I, I didn't check some growth. Let's actually check some growth right here before we sign off. And see if we maybe got some extra. Cleft Bomb's still sitting there. Kai Gorodov grew a bit more. Classic grew. Who cares about him? Uh, yeah, Cleft Bomb a little bit. But if he jumps, which he damn well should, he'll be in good shape, man. Like, he'll be ready for that second line. He's already 84 in the system here. Yeah, Jagger Marlowe. Yeah, Gaucher is going to be hopping up too, likely. Benoit, yeah, dude. Like, they're, they're beyond ready. They should... They might even jump in the offseason, which would be huge. But Benoit's a top. He's already top four. He's hopping in immediately into a key role. Jagger Marlowe, same thing. Hopping in immediately. God damn, he's 6'5". How tall did you make that guy? <laughs> he's way taller than dad. Um, he'll be... He's like... This is like, this like Joe Thornton's kid, man. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll be hopping in immediately to the second line. Gaucher on the third. Like, Tabernacolo, though. Likely going to take some more development. Looking like that's the case. But yeah. So we got their two two centers essentially the future. Gaucher coming up. Who should be hmm. Yeah, I'd say maybe going after a power forward might be good, but we do have multiple snipers. I don't know, sniper or a power forward really could be any of them. Because you think about what we have right now, which we'll think about like you know we have Pedersen, Horvat, who's like might be a three C, but he's doing tremendous. Like eventually you do want Pedersen maybe to be back on in the middle. He does have eighty two face offs now, so like moving back to the middle, Horvat will eventually be third line with Hoaglander and put Coles in probably. But, yeah, I'm kind of hoping Gaucher is ready for, like, a second-line role next season. That would be great. Maybe put Coles in Wilby and, like, we slide him back later. Or maybe we keep him up there. Maybe he maybe he does good in the top six. I don't, I'm not banking on it, right? Because he's medium top six and 22-83. Like, he still has room to grow, but not banking on it. Gaucher could easily get up there. So, thinking of the future, Horvat, or for the top six. Pedersen. 
Jagger Marlow, eventually Tabernacolo, uh, Clef Bomb, Gaucher. We're kind of still missing that one other piece. So that's what this, this, I think that's what this draft year is about. Defensively, we're fine. Hughes, Kai Gorodov, Dermot, and Benoit. Dermot's kind of, you know, an in-between guy, but he's, he locks it down. He's going to be cheap throughout, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't know if we'll need to get anything much better than him. And what we got coming up here in the draft class, obviously, it, you know. Huh. Nilo Kolas, cause of love. That. Is that, that, no, that seems like a EA generated guy. Anyway, there's a power forward right there. Another power forward here in a voice check. Uh, Bartizak, Aronson. Like, there's plenty of power forwards here. We also have guys that I will probably uh, interview just so I know what the fuck they are because I don't remember. That's a good thing. I like that. Uh, I got this Tyler Tessier guy. Probably high six. Looking like it. Uh, also, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. Arnett. Yeah, that's right. Like, easy, easy grab right there. You can grab Arnett. And a power for it if you really want. That's kind of overkill, but we'll see what our fortunes are essentially. But yeah, Cam Arnett, sniper who's NHL ready. Overload. Oh man, that's actually perfect. Yeah, absolutely gonna grab him. And then honestly, if we can't, if we yeah, you never know. If there's something available, we can try to grab one of these power forwards. Be hilarious to get a high elite power forward. Be actually kind of nuts. He's a behind the net guy too. Gets emotional at times, driven to win. Also NHL ready. Like that would be pretty massive. At that point, you have some wiggle room. You have like an extra guy who could be in that top six, and you can kind of mix and mash and figure things out. And again, honestly, Tabernacolo may not ever pan out properly to the way we want. Arnett should. The other guy definitely will. But that'll depend on what's available. We can 100% grab Arnett. Easy. I don't care if like if it's even on the block around here. We could force that trade through. Arnett is a guarantee that we can grab. Guaranteed elite, guaranteed NHL ready, or at least high 70s. 100% going to grab him. Tessier would be good to grab if we didn't have Horvat. <laughs> he'll, he'll likely be high top six, but nah. Um, Isaac Wallace is also here. Don't need. It's all about going for one of these power forwards, probably. We'll let the franchise go. Just going to be way too hard to get him. We'll see. We'll see if we're able to grab a... Uh, yeah, see if we're able to grab... I mean, if there's any pick available in the top five, we can get a power forward. Overload. Behind the net. Behind the net. Behind the net. So most of them behind the net. I can't remember what Gaucher is, but it, that's that's less important than it has been in the past. But yeah, we got tons and tons of good stuff coming in this draft. We can guarantee ourselves locking in our top six of the future and perhaps a bonus player for that top six. We're in good shape. We're absolutely in good shape. So guys, hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.